I've been with this project with the, the rover since 2004 when we proposed the cameras that take all these beautiful color images. And, uh, but my own story goes back to reading National Geographic in the early 1970s and the coverage of the Mariner missions and the Voyager and, and Apollo. So it's kind of trippy to be standing here right now. Uh, this is a landscape. Uh, Mount Sharp, you see to the upper left, rising out of the scene in that direction. In the other direction, you don't actually see it here, but we will see it. You will see the wall of Gale off further in the distance. Mount Sharp is three miles high of, of layered sediment. Uh, the kinds of outcrops of rock that we've been looking at since we landed are more like ankle and knee high. And some of them are down under foot, like the mudstone that we drilled. By the way, two years ago when we landed, if you said the first thing we drill is going to be a mudstone, and that we would find that it was actually a habitable environment, I wouldn't have believed you. So this has been an amazing two years. Um, you see Curiosity carries its name on its arm. It carries its name on its sleeve. And uh, what we are doing, we are geologists for the most part, and what we are doing is trying to read the history of this place in the layered rock. We call it stratigraphy. But basically, the oldest rocks are at the bottom of a, of a stack, and the youngest are at the top. And so if you go like to the Grand Canyon in Arizona, for example, or Letchworth, I've been there many times, uh, older, younger. So what you see here behind me is one of these landscapes in a place called Dingo Gap. This was just a few months ago. In the far distance, you actually see the north wall of Gale Crater. So we're, we're trying to look at these rocks with the rover and try to understand the history that they're telling us about this place. Here's another place we called this one Shaler. And this is layered rocks laid down by moving water in a stream. All of that orange brown stuff you see, that's the dust. The rocks is the dark gray stuff. Everything we've seen in Gale has been sedimentary rock and it's been various shades of gray. Here's another landscape again in the direction we are driving. Here you can actually see the wall of Gale off in the far distance and you see a little bit of Mount Sharp off in this corner up here. In front of us, right in the foreground, is a little drift of sand, wind-blown sand. What we've been dealing with here is a very, very thin veneer of wind-blown sand, wind-blown dust, and all those little pebbles and cobbles you see, that's just the detritus as this rock breaks down and then wind carries it away. This is a story of we are right there by the bedrock. It is right under our feet. We can drive up to it. We can read this history. But we do have to deal with this veneer of dust and sand and, and pebbles here and there. Um, wind erosion is a big deal in Gale in allowing us to do our jobs. And if you look in the sort of the, the bottom middle of this picture, you'll see a little pebble. And behind it is a protrusion going back under the sand into the rock outcrop or into the rock face. A little pebble and then this protrusion. That pebble protected all that rock behind it as wind blew sand and eroded that rock back except where that pebble was. That's like one of my favorite pictures from this mission. Now here's a close-up. Like I said, sedimentary rock. This is bits of old rock. So think about the history here. There was rock on Mars. That rock broke apart, made sand and pebbles and cobbles and, and dust, and then that stuff was transported by wind or water and deposited in gale. And then later, it becomes rock, okay, so sediment then becomes rock, and then even later, the wind is eroding that, leaving like that protrusion with the pebble, okay. This is a picture of one of the conglomerates that we saw, and this is a close-up, and you see a penny for scale, so you get some idea. These are actually very small pebbles. Uh, you know, about the size of Lincoln's head. That penny is also on Mars, but not actually in this photo. I photoshopped that in <laughs> to give you a sense of scale. But that, the rover carries that penny with it, and I, I love to use it you know, for scale because we're all familiar with that. Um, that was a conglomerate. Now I'm going to go to a finer grained sediment. This is a sandstone, OK? And what you're looking at is the sand is both the very dark gray mass that you see everywhere, you can't actually see the individual grains because they're actually smaller than the camera was resolving here. 
And then you see little protrusions, which are larger sand grains set in that finer sand. Those protrusions are there because of wind erosion. Those are resisting the blasting by the sand, so they stick out. But then at the bottom, you see a void. You see out of focus dirt in the background because this is a layer that's forming a shelf, an overhang, and the layer beneath it retreated back out of view. You can't see it. Now, everything you see in this picture that looks kind of brownish or reddish is just dust sitting on the rock. This rock is dark gray. Next slide shows the finest grained sedimentary rock we've seen, which is this mudstone. And the penny here is for scale again. And you see an area that the rover brushed. It has a little wire brush. We don't use it often, but when we do, it does a good job. Now let's look at that close up, okay? The camera on the arm can get right down, literally within an inch or so, and we can take these close up views. Here now, you actually see grooves cut into the rock by the brush, so this rock is not really, really hard. It actually can get little grooves from the wire as it, as the wire brush as it moves. And you see some of the dust that's sort of generated as it swirls that up. But when we look at the rock itself, ignore the dust, ignore the grooves, we, we find that the grains are too small to see with this camera. And this is one of the highest resolution images ever taken outside of a microscope, you know, on board the Phoenix uh, lander. This is the one of the highest, we're right down there with this camera, and we can't see the grains, so they are very, very fine grains. So let me talk briefly about some of the other tools. You've seen a lot of pictures. You get a sense that we can do a lot with pictures, we, uh, but we also want to know about the chemistry of the rocks and the minerals that make up the rocks. This is the arm, is that white thing sticking down, and then the turret, and in the shadow underneath there, you see a little box called the APXS. That is a science instrument that is using x-rays, and it is measuring the chemistry of the rock there. So that is one of our tools. Here now is another brushed spot. This was just at the end of April. Uh, this was a sandstone. And remember the penny in the brush spot, so it's like three or four or five pennies across. But you see an array of dots going through that. Those were formed by a laser beam zapping the rock at each one of those spots, multiple times at each spot, okay? And then the instrument observes the light that comes off of that as it zaps it, and it can tell you something about the chemistry of the rock that way. Later, in May, we actually drilled this rock. But here's our very first drill hole. The diameter is 16 millimeters, one six millimeters. I don't know, what's a millimeter? Well, a Roosevelt dime, a US dime, is 17 millimeters. So this is one millimeter smaller than a dime. This is the stuff that if you told me this was gonna be the first thing we drilled, you know, before we landed, I, I, I didn't even know that we'd land, right? It, 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 <laughs> you see the, the gray mudstone there. You also see this white lightning bolt. That is, uh, a, there was a crack in that rock at some point in its history, and minerals filled that, uh, sulfur and calcium bearing minerals filled that vein. Getting a picture like this allows us to get a sense of what did we actually drill through. Then that sample is put into instruments that are inside the rover's body, one to find out what the minerals are and one to find out what the chemistry is. Uh, I just wanna leave you with this because this is why we do this. It's really for understanding our home. And uh, so what you're seeing is the rim of Gale after sunset, and then there's a bright dot in the sky, that's Earth. And if you look at the little blow up, you actually see there's two dots. The bright one is Earth, the fainter one is the moon. You can see these from Mars. And we study this stuff to understand our home planet just as much as to because of our curiosity. Thank you.